Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss the Financial Times' latest attempts to draw meaningful comparisons between different countries on the coronavirus response. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, then please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, direct comparisons are a little tricky at the moment. You can't look at the number of cases in different countries because that depends on testing. So unless the countries that you wish to compare have the same testing regime, you can't draw any meaningful comparisons there. For example, the UK has carried out just under 10,000 tests per million of the population, and Germany has carried out just under 25,000 per million of their population. And even when the numbers are closer, the types of tests used and the way that they are targeted has an impact. So someone was showing me an article in the British Medical Journal, for example, yesterday, which highlighted that um, you know the, the the quality of the different tests, the reliability of the different tests. So you could use a particular test that's not actually the best test to use. Some countries may use better tests than others, for example. There's all sorts of things that, as far as I'm concerned, just make looking at the number of cases utterly worthless, which really leaves deaths caused, which is a much grimmer statistic. But only that's knackered too. Again, for example, if you look at the official figures, it looks like France still has more coronavirus deaths than the UK. But it hasn't. The UK has got way more coronavirus deaths than France. And this is because France counts all deaths caused by the coronavirus. Mad idea, I know, I don't know what they're thinking, but when someone dies of the coronavirus, they put that down as a coronavirus death. It's insane, but the French have a very funny way of looking at things. In the UK, we only count deaths in hospitals because, I mean, that makes the number lower, doesn't it? Lower number's better, isn't it? So why would we count everyone? It just makes the number higher. Why would we want to do that? So if you go by the official figures, it's a complete nonsense as well. Though if you, you and we know that the figures are much higher, um, the Financial Times, using the data from the Office for National Statistics, worked out that the actual number of deaths from coronavirus is more than double what is being reported in the UK. So what to do? How can you make meaningful statistical comparisons? So you could draw extreme examples, like you could note that the coronavirus reared its unwelcome head in the UK at the same time as in Greece. Greece went into immediate lockdown. We were jamming hundreds of thousands of people together in festivals, getting ready for summer as if nothing was going on in the world. Greece now has a death rate of 13 per million of the population. We have 305 per million of the population. And that's, remember, using our fiddled figures, which are actually less than half the real figure. But someone writing for the Financial Times has had another idea. What about looking at the excess death rates? After all, countries are reporting the total number of deaths. They're being recorded. They're just not all doing a good job of filtering by cause. But we can see how many people have died in any particular week in any particular country, or at least in the European countries. So comparing the death rate per week now with historical averages gives you something to compare. So the graphs you're going to be looking at are weekly increases in rates of death compared to similar periods over the last five years. Now, a couple of things to bear in mind. First, people may have died to causes, um, you know, other than coronavirus. For example, not getting medical help. Now, this could be because of an unwillingness to go to a doctor. I'll be honest, I'd have to be pretty sick to want to go to a doctor. The last place I'd want to go at the moment is a hospital or a clinic or anything like that. Um, or it could be because of a stretched health service actively turning them away. For whatever reason, there could be more deaths due to other things, as well as, of course, deaths due to the coronavirus. But then you'd think to yourself, but is it really a problem to factor in indirect deaths? Because it's all still related to the current crisis, after all. Second thing to bear in mind is that some populations may have very low rates of death normally that have been blown away by the virus. So Italy famously has a very elderly population because their diet and way of life lets them normally live forever. I swear Italians seem to live longer than giant tortoises. But the findings are quite interesting. And do you know what? 
it shows that for a lot of countries, there must be some serious underreporting of deaths. So the analysis showed that, you know, when you lumped some places together, the stats were showing an excess death toll of 122,000. In other words, per week, you group a few countries together, there's 122,000 people died in excess of what would normally have died in the same week going back over the last five years. But only 77,000 deaths in those countries were attributed to the coronavirus. Well, that's a hell of a disparity right there. A massive disparity. Essentially, in the European countries that the Financial Times was investigating, which was by no means all, and unfortunately seemed to miss out Greece and Germany, which would have been very interesting to look at, there's been a roughly 50% increase in mortality. Actually, less than that in England and Wales. Italy, unsurprisingly, has taken the biggest hit, 90% excess, probably due to the vulnerable nature of the population, perhaps. But what the data does show is just how much we are downplaying the fatal effects of the coronavirus. I want to say we, again, I don't just mean the UK, but quite a lot of major European countries at least, and you would probably think quite a lot of countries in the world as well. Some countries may not even have the facilities to ac adequately record a massive surge in death rates either. So there we are, that's the Financial Times' latest little look at it, quite interesting. I'll link the article down below, of course. And although the Financial Times is usually behind a paywall, a number of articles related to the coronavirus are being made free, so you should be able to see this one. Um, but I hope you find the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, then please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.